One of the hottest areas of innovation today is the application of computing and data in the medical field. We are fortunate to have on our faculty in the Pratt School of Engineering, the Mordecai Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering, Dr. Amanda Randalls. Amanda is leading an incredible team that is passionately looking at the application of digital twins, AI and machine learning, as well as computational technologies to tackle some of the most complex and the most vexing problems in medicine today. I'm Jerry Lynch, the Vinick Dean of Engineering at Duke University, and it is my honor to interview Professor Amanda Randalls today. Amanda, hey. thank you for joining us. Thanks. Please sit. Amanda, thank you so much for taking the time to join me in the conversation about your center, the Center for Computational and Digital Health Innovation. Can you describe what the center is and what it's trying to achieve? We're really excited about the new center. We're bringing together engineers, basic scientists, clinicians all together in one ecosystem to really try to drive the mission we're stating is to find, track, and treat human disease. And we're doing that using three enabling technologies. So we're really focused on cutting edge technologies like wearable devices, real time and high performance computing, and then virtual reality for interaction. I often hear in the media this term digital twin. Can you describe what that is in the context of medicine and health? For us, we see a digital twin, it's really just this, this virtual replica and it's a digital representation of a physical entity. So for us, that's going to be the patient or the human, or it could be something like an organ or you know, just a digital twin of, of the heart. And then the key piece that makes it different from just a computational model is that it's getting data in a, a dynamic way from something like wearable sensors. So it's not just you know an idealized representation of a person or a heart, it is really tied to that patient. So we, we want to bring everything together to really kind of drive this idea of a digital twin and how do we have a replica of the patient that allows us to do things like remote monitoring of the patient. So when you're, you know, at home going about your daily life, can the doctor check in and see, you know, are you likely to have heart failure? You know, wh where are you at? And then giving some kind of actionable predictive power that allows the doctors to make, you know, a better informed decision. When you talk about prediction, oftentimes we hear synonymous with prediction is AI, machine learning. How is AI and machine learning playing a role in the prediction capabilities that are being built in this digital twin of the patient? That's really exciting where we're tying in all of the advances you're seeing with AI and coupling that with the computational science and the physics-based modeling that we're using in the center. Like in my lab, we work on the blood flow side of things. So we have 3D simulations showing what your real blood flow state is in you know coronary arteries and a geometry direct from a CT scan where it's a very patient-specific personalized model. But then it's informing these large-scale AI machine learning driven predictions. You know, we see the outcome of this as saying, you know, five years from now, we're able to pro actively identify heart failure, for example, before you ever even exhibit symptoms. So before you have chest pain, before you know you would normally call your doctor or go to the hospital, identify two or three weeks ahead of that, this person is likely going to have heart failure, kind of like a check engine light yeah. for the patient of like, you need to go in, you need to get checked out and let's identify it proactively and let the doctor go in and say something and you know take action ahead of time and help that patient. That is absolutely incredible. And you can think of how many lives you'd save by getting so far ahead of that prediction that heart failure is about to occur in the coming days or weeks. That's amazing. From the standpoint of the center's mission, you've described a lot about its research mission. How about on the education side? How do you see the center playing a role training future engineers, future doctors, future nurses? What's the opportunity there for the center to impact our education mission? We're really excited about kind of connecting the research mission with the education. I think with all the cutting edge technology, it is critical that people on the clinical side understand how to correctly use this new technology, understand the nuances of, you know, how do you deploy AI and know the, you know, the, the pros and cons of using those tools? What are the drawbacks and where, where, how do you best deploy this technology? And then we also need the engineers to understand what are the real world scenarios where the technology could be deployed. So we're really trying to connect them on that end and then also make the technology more usable for people. So we have, you know, wearable apps that undergraduates could be able to use. You know, we're trying to spawn out, you know, data plus teams, mass connection teams to really bring people together across the schools and be able to dive into the data you would get from from these kinds of options. We're also trying to create, you know, more structured programs that could lead to like certificate programs in competition and digital health. So we're really trying to, to cross the board on that end. That's tremendous. One of the superpowers of Duke is that ability to 
to access the clinical setting. And certainly here in the School of Engineering, we've been great beneficiaries of taking our technologies to the clinic, validate, see how it works. How are you leveraging our clinical settings here on campus to empower the research and the educational mission of the center? I think that's, that's one of the things where we're really lucky. We're like with the School of Medicine right across the street, there are members from the School of Medicine that are in the center. So they are working directly with us to help drive that mission and allow the engineers to actually go spend time, you know, in the cath lab. We're working with cardiology to create like a virtual cath lab. So we'd have a VR experience of the operating room and the cath lab. So we can both use it for training for physicians and, and nurses and, and people on that end, but also use it for the engineers to see how would I deploy my technology and kind of experience the OR with all the frenzy and chaos yep. without having to be in the OR. So we're, we're really, you know, having informed research from both sides. Amanda, thank you so much for generously sharing your vision for the center. And thank you for the amazing work you're doing. It really sounds like it's going to impact human health and save lives. So well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. What do you like to do when you're not doing research or leading this amazing center? So I went to Duke as an undergrad and I'm a huge Duke fan and I really like going to Duke basketball games and I have three little kids and now we're, you know, introducing them to Duke basketball and bringing them to the games and that's, that's really exciting. One of them met Ryan Young this week and she was very Oh, cool. <laughs> it was very funny. Like he was just standing outside the game yeah. and she was just like, there you go.